untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer game the video. Today I'm going to try to answer the question, is Lotus Field Combo a viable deck in Explorer now that we finally have access to Thespian Stage in the format? Of course we're still missing a few key pieces compared to the Pioneer build of the deck, but hopefully we can still make it work. So the core card of this deck is Lotus Field, a land with Hexproof, enters battlefield tapped, and then taps to make 3 mana of any one color. Of course there is a drawback, when it enters we have to sacrifice 2 lands, so we typically don't want to play Lotus Field unless we have 2 other lands in play. This is not a deck where we're going to try to counter the sacrifice trigger to keep Lotus Field in play, instead we're going to try to ramp it out and hopefully then untap Lotus Field a few times to generate a big mana advantage. So Lotus Field is a card we always want to have access to, and if we don't have it in our opening hand we can also search it up with Sylvan's Crying, another recent addition. Two mana sorcery can find any land and put it into our hand. So early game we're going to try to find Lotus Field if we don't have one already. can also find Thespian Stage, which is another key card here. For 2 mana we can tap Thespian Stage to become a copy of target land, so that can copy our Lotus Field without having to sacrifice 2 lands to it, so now we can potentially generate 6 mana with only 2 lands. And then if we already have Thespian Stage and Lotus Field, late game we can also potentially use Sylvan Scrying to get Soaring City, which can be channeled to bounce something, or Boseju to deal with artifacts, enchantments or non-basic lands. And then we also have access to four copies of Portent Tracker, which is not a card you typically see in the Pioneer builds of the deck, which instead can get away without having to play any real creatures that the opponent can take out. So that's one of the downsides of this Explorer build compared to the Pioneer versions, is that our deck is much more vulnerable to spot removal on those early creatures. But if Portent Tracker survives, it can be quite powerful, since we can tap it to untap target land. So we can play turn 2 Tracker, turn 3 play Lotus Field, still have some mana floating, and then we can immediately untap our Lotus Field, with Tracker to start generating a lot of extra mana. And then besides Tracker we also have two copies of Hope Tender, which can pay one mana to untap target land, so it's worse at untapping a single Lotus Field since it costs us one mana, but it can also pay one mana, tap and then exert it, so it won't untap in its next untap step, but then we get to untap two target lands, so it's especially powerful if we have Lotus Field and a Thespian Stage copying Lotus Field, because now the Tender will essentially generate five extra mana that we can use to ramp out some of our expensive plays to close out the game. And then we also have four copies of Vizier of Tumbling Sands, which can be cycled for one and a blue, and if we cycle it to draw a card, we also get to untap target permanent, so we can untap Lotus Field, essentially generating an extra blue mana in the process while drawing a card, or we can potentially cast the Vizier, and then it can also tap to untap another target permanent, so in manships where we don't expect it to die, it can also help us generate three extra mana with a Lotus Field in play. And then we also have four copies of Pour Over the Pages as our final way to really abuse Lotus Field. Can draw three cards, untap up to two lands and then discard a card. So with a double Lotus Field in play, this will actually generate one extra mana in addition to churning through the deck by drawing and discarding. So that can find additional copies of Pour Over the Pages. Finding Vizier can also generate more mana. And then eventually we want to cast something like an Emergent Ultimatum, which can find three monocolored spells. Opponent gets to choose one of them and and then we get to cast the other two for free. So typically we want to search up Omniscience, which our opponent is unlikely to give us, otherwise we can cast everything from our hand for free. We can also get something like a Peer into the Abyss if we already have a lot of mana to essentially draw half of our deck, which is likely to win us a game. We could also get a Chandra Hope's Beacon, which is a relatively recent addition to the archetype. It's pretty flexible since it can be used to take care of problematic creatures like maybe a Thalia that might slow us down, and then it can also be used to copy some of our instants and sorceries, such as Pour Over the Pages, which can then also generate more mana and draw more cards, so that's pretty sweet. And then it can also be a win condition once we get Omniscience on the battlefield, since we can use Chandra's minus X ability to deal 5 damage to the opponent, but first we want to make use of the passive ability by by using Balagat Recovery to get back two more copies of Balagat Recovery from our graveyard. That way we get to infinitely loop Balagat with Chandra while damaging the opponent. So that's another pretty sweet way to close out the game. And then we also have a Leer Disciple of the Drowned to give our Instants and Sorceries flashback, so it can be very nice alongside Pour Over the Pages with Double Lotus Field in play to keep generating more mana and drawing more cards. This is a spot where not having Hidden Strings is a pretty big drawback, since Leer alongside Hidden Strings can be quite powerful to generate more mana. Same can be said for Chandra, which is also quite good alongside Hidden Strings to make more mana, so that's where those cards will be missed. 
And then we also have a Masterminds Acquisition, which can find a card in our main deck or sideboard. So that's where the sideboard can come into play, finding an approach of the Second Sun, which is usually the fastest way to close out a game once we have an Omniscience on the battlefield. As we can search it up, cast it, gain 7, it goes back into our deck, and then we can draw into it again with Pour Over the Pages or with our Impulse effect, and then we can cast it a second time to win the game on the spot. Can also search up some fun cards like Zakama, which can untap our lands, quite synergistic with Lotus Field, and then it can wreak havoc on the opponent's board. Got another Chandra, another Acquisition, but usually going for approach is the most straightforward way to win the game. Also have a bit of interaction with Cyclonic Rift, which can also be overloaded, or Path of Peril to deal with smaller creatures. But for the most part, we're only gonna cast Acquisition once we can really close out the game. And then we also have four copies of Arboreal Grazer, which is an important part of speeding up our deck, as it can help us put an additional land in place so we can get Lotus Field going a turn sooner. And then it's also an O3 blocker that can maybe save us a bit of damage early on, which is not to be underestimated. And then we've got a bit more card draw with Shimmer of Possibility and the Instant Speed Impulse to help find Lotus Field or the missing combo pieces. And then a Balagad Recovery can be played as a land, and then if we sacrifice it when we play Lotus Field, it goes back into our graveyard, so we'll still have three copies to work with to set up that infinite loop with Chandra. Can also flash it back with Leer to get back some of our key cards from the graveyard. And then besides our Balagad Sanctuary, Stage and Lotus Field, we also have two copies of Temple of Mystery, which lets us scry one even though it enters tapped. Can be quite synergistic with Grazer if we put it in place, since that land always enters tapped. Only one Breeding Pool and four copies of Botanical Sanctum, which is also quite synergistic with Lotus Field, because we're sacrificing lands we're unlikely to have Sanctum enter tapped. And then we've got one Pathway, a Lair of the Hydra can also be an alternate win condition, and then we mentioned the Channel Lands, and then one Basic Island in case we need to search it up. Sometimes it is important to have two Islands besides our two copies of Lotus Field, so we can still cast our Emergent Ultimatum, so typically prefer having blue mana later in the game as opposed to green mana alongside a Lotus Field, so that's just a small side note. A lot of ways we can customize the one-off win conditions alongside Omniscience, but for now I've been pretty happy with the split, while we're still missing cards like Dark Petition, or Behold the Beyond, which are cards you can run in the Pioneer builds. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand facing a Gigantha deck. So Grazer can put in Soaring City and then Lotus Field. Okay, another Grazer. So we can uh, quickly get these Lotus Fields in play. No Thespians stage yet, but we can find one with Sylvan Scrying. So that might be the play next turn over Grazer. Up against a red-black sacrifice deck. So yeah, having some mana creatures as opposed to hidden strings is going to hurt us when our opponent has Harvester and other removal spells they can use to take out our creatures. So yeah, let's get a Thespian stage. And run out a Lotus Field. And then next turn, we can play Stage, copy Lotus Field, and still have a spare mana for Grazer. And then pour over the pages is going to be a pretty effective spell. Getting to add a mana, and draw three and discard. In the meantime, Grazer can soak up a bit of damage. Could see a Fable of the Mirror Breaker on three. Nope, opponent passes, and we drew Omniscience, so now we can't find it with Ultimatum, but we might be able to ramp into it. So let's make green mana, activate stage, and Grazer puts an island. Now our opponent could still have a discard spell next turn, Thoughtseize taking away, pour over the pages, would be a setback. And our extra Lotus Field is not doing much at the moment, since I don't have two lands I want to sacrifice to it. End of turn Village Rites, finds Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and draws two. So we'll likely see them tap out for Fable, unless they have a Thought Seize they absolutely want to use. Field of Ruin actually could have been effective if we had an exposed Thespian stage, but now Lotus Field has X proof. And I'll take three. Okay, Boseju could also go after Fable, but let's start by 
pouring over the pages. And then we also want to be careful about how we tap our mana. But I guess blue is fine, and then I'll be left with double blue after untapping. So I could still cast an ultimatum if I draw it. Another pour. And then this card, probably Hope Tender, doesn't stand a chance of uh, untapping, I think. So we can pour again. And there's a Peer into the Abyss. Okay, discard Portent Tracker. And then let's see here, we should be able to just cast Omniscience right now. But I can also cycle Vizier of Tumbling Sands first. Okay, so cast Omniscience. Then we can peer into the Abyss and we should be able to find the win from there. Opponent probably has a Fatal Push in hand that they won't be able to use. Okay, we've got a lot of cards in hand now. We can cast Emergent Ultimatum. See what's left in the deck. Chandra, Leer, also doesn't die to Fatal Push, and the Mastermind's Acquisition are probably the cards we're interested in. And I don't think we're gonna fizzle from here. Just need to find our Mastermind's Acquisition again to get Approach of the Second Sun and win the game. That's probably the easiest, or we can win with Chandra, which can loop with uh, Balagat Recovery, which... We don't have any in hand, do we? I guess there's one Balaged. So we get to cast Acquisition. Get a card from outside the game. Play Leer. And Approach is going to be the most straightforward. Cast Approach. Can flashback Acquisition for free with Omniscience, but we haven't played land for the turn. And we can cast a free Pour of the Pages to make more mana with Lotus Field. Or we can just naturally draw into Approach, of course. But we can flashback Acquisition just to show how it works. Get a card from Library now. Get Approach. Cast Approach. All right, easy enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing Thespian Stage and eventually some top hand cards, but we've got Lotus Field. And then turn two, I can cast Shimmer to try and find Thespian Stage. Turn one elf off mana confluence, not sure what that implies. Still see a turn two Kiora, so it could still be some sort of uh, devotion strategy. Portent Tracker can be worth a shot now, since I could untap Lotus Field next turn. But our opponent's not the classic green devotion deck, so they might have some interaction. This looks like a Wolf Hollow Haven. So they still have 4 mana with Kiora. We'll have to wait and see what the colored mana is for. I seek us chariots, okay. Not bad. So, yeah, play Lotus Field. Then we can do a bunch of stuff, including Shimmer to look for Thespian Stage. Might want to untap my land first. Make some more blue. So yeah, let's say we Shimmer. Hope Tender versus Pour Over the Pages. I think we need the additional card draw. I have enough mana going as is. So we can just play Vizier instead of Grazer. Since I'm out of lands to play besides Lotus Field here, which doesn't really help in this situation.
Opponent untaps Wolf Hollow Haven for a Storm the Festival. All right. Finding Luca, I see. So this is a combo deck looking to cheat some creatures into play with Luca. Explains the red mana. But they haven't activated Luca yet, so not sure what's uh, next here. All right, Point's gonna minus on the chariots and puts in Itali, Primal Conqueror, not bad. They found pour over the pages, which is actually pretty good with Wolf of Haven. Although it will end up in our graveyard, so we can potentially get it back with Leer if it comes to it. But now our opponent can keep casting more spells. And next turn they could try and poison us to death with a tally. Nykthos can generate four red mana, so that's plus one. They hadn't played land yet. Could have been worse, our opponent could have found an Omniscience with Itali. So all in all, Poor of the Pages is still pretty tame compared to some of the top-end cards they could have hit. Opponent makes green mana. Six left. Could be another Storm the Festival. It's gonna be a Kiora instead. Okay, can untap Nykthos and generate a bit more mana. Yep, so that's five left. And an old growth troll draws. Alright, opponent's finally done. We found Thespian Stage. So that might be the priority, so I can untap two Lotus Fields with Pour Over the Pages. So let's play Stage. Activates. Floating some green mana, perhaps. And then now we can untap. Untap again. Make blue. And make more green. Cast pour. Finding another pour, so we can keep going. Don't need Lotus Field. And there's Emergent Ultimatum. Discard Lotus Field. So let's pour again, and then this time we want to make sure we leave ourselves with Ultimatum Mana. So we'll have three green floating and one blue. Discarding Breeding Pool. Okay, so we can go for Ultimatum here. Although better to make a bit more mana with Vizier. Find a Grazer. So let's go for Ultimatum now. Before we draw into some of our combo pieces, get Omniscience, Chandra and Leer. Opponent's probably not giving us Omniscience. So we get to cast Leer and Chandra. Okay, so let's untap with uh, Vizier once again. So now we have enough for Pour of the Pages, which will be copied by Chandra. So that's a bunch more mana and cards. So make sure to go full control so we can activate in between. Okay, can pour over the pages again. Discard Hope Tender. 
do it again. And there's our Inquisition. So our opponent casting that poor earlier actually ended up being relevant for us. Alright, so we've got a boatload of mana. Acquisition can get Omniscience, and then we can cast Omniscience. And that should pretty much wrap it up. But we'll untap with Vizier first. Can also still activate Chandra for mana if we'd like. Cast Omniscience. So now I get to recovery for free, get back acquisition, cast it, get approach. Cast the approach, and then with impulse we can find it. Free ultimatum could also be fun. All right. Not bad. So yeah, opponents got to combo off with Luca and Itali. We got to do the same with our Omniscience eventually. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a Keepable Hand. We've got some good early acceleration. Double Lotus Fields, not as good as finding a Thespian stage here. But what I could do next turn is play Lotus Field and untap it with the Vizier and then cast another Vizier. And that's one other way of just generating a lot of mana. Yeah, I think I'm down. Especially against a white aggro deck. They're not going to have a ton of removal for us. Okay, now Sylvan's Crying could get Thespian Stage, but I'm still kind of liking this Vizier play. So next turn could untap Lotus Fields and make three more mana. Lieutenant is fine. Not gonna jump with the Grazer yet. Can soak up more damage in the future. Our opponent could have animated Mutavolt just so it picked up an extra plus one counter since they're not going to have a use for that colorless mana elsewhere. Another ultimatum, so make some mana. Get Thespian's stage. Play it. Can activate this at instant speed. And then copy Lotus Fields. I guess I could pass for now, just have a 1 3 blocker if needed. And then next turn, I should be able to cast Emergent Ultimatum. Get Omniscience, Chandra, pour over the pages, I want to say. Adlin's not going to change that, so now we can actually kill the 1 1 token. And then Grazer could jump or could still wait a turn. But ideally, our opponent doesn't get another turn. Let's activate Vizier. And activate Stage. Okay, take 8 down to 9. And there's a Pour of the Pages, that's even more mana. Although, don't know if we need to show them quite yet. So yeah, cast Ultimatum. And then I can get Chandra, Omniscience, and uh, another Pour of the Pages. I think that's the way to go.
got lucky to dodge Thalia in this matchup, which is a pretty difficult card to beat for us. That's where the main deck Chandra can also come in handy, taking out a problematic creature like Thalia. This card Lair. So we can cast another Pour of the Pages, and this time it will be doubled by Chandra's passive. Discard a Breeding Pool, and then want to make some more mana here, and resolve our second copy. And there's Omniscience, so we can just cast an Omniscience now. Alright, so we've got our Omniscience in play, and now we can Ultimatum again. Get Mastermind's Acquisition, Leer, and uh, maybe our Peer into the Abyss. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Not bad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. No Lotus Field or way to find it, so this hand is a bit lacking. Probably get a Mulligan. This is better. And then it's going to be a tough call what to get rid of. Can play a Grazer turn one put in Pathway, turn to Sylvan Scrying and play Lotus Field, pour over the pages. There's a decent cantrip, especially alongside Leer, so it's possible I don't need Peer into the Abyss, but then I might want to draw into some other big top-end card once we make enough mana. But without Thespian Stage, I may not be able to fully combo off. Alright, there's an Omniscience. So Pathway will enter as the green side if we put it in play with a Grazer, but that's fine. Gonna end up sacrificing both anyway. Opponent Blue Reds could be a creativity deck. Hope Tender, unlikely to survive, and I also want to hit my land drop for a turn. Although Sylvan Scrank could get countered, that's the drawback. And yeah, there's a Mig Disappear. So no Lotus Field for the Lotus Field deck, that's going to be a problem. For now, play Tracker. And dies to a Volcanic Spite. Not sure that Hidden Strings would be much better here without a Lotus Field in play, but eventually with Leer we would much prefer Hidden Strings. Opponent's got 4 mana gonna likely see a big score and then untap and we could see them combo off with creativity putting in Xenagos and World Spine Worm. Another removal spell on Hope Tender instead. Yeah that's two creatures that kind of the stock build of Lotus Field doesn't run in Pioneer. So you dodge that interaction. Just a third lane for now and pass. So not really where we want to be. The Shaman has free reign to attack, make a treasure. Opponent was packing a bunch more burn spells. So against classic Lotus Field, the only relevant interaction would have been a Make Disappear. Which honestly was uh, pretty effective here, denying us the uh, Lotus Field in the first place. Thespian's stage can eventually come in handy. Impulse, our opponent's still digging for their creativity. But they'll get to dig pretty deep with Impulse. And they've got all the tokens they need now to potentially combo. There's Lotus Field, alright, let's make some mana. Then we can copy with Thespian Stage right away. And hope to get another turn. 
And there's a big score. Can they find indomitable creativity? Secrets, that's fine. Sank the clue. So they haven't found it yet. They might also have some combo pieces in hand by now. Although I have to imagine they'll have another make disappear in hand at least. So then the question is, do I want to play Leer first, which prevents spells from being countered? Of course, can still be countered itself. I have seven mana, so they can make disappear with casualty by sacking the Shaman. Pour over the pages if that gets countered. Bit of a setback, but at least Leer can replay it later. So I think we still start there. Opponent copies a Shaman and they can sacrifice that to the Make Disappear. Okay. Could play another Grazer just as an extra blocker. I guess that's fine. Just have to pass it back. And uh, yeah, we'll see if our opponent found the pieces in the meantime. They're gonna big score again. Not sure if there's really a point in casting it end of turn with four treasures. Might as well take your draw step first. Mirex can also make some tokens. Reflection, copy, shaman. So yeah, they still don't have the creativity. They can flashback secrets, make more clue tokens. Or hang on to some more interaction. Okay, just gonna play Leer and then can still play Hope Tender afterwards. Assuming this gets countered. Yep, oh, it resolves. Can Sylvan's Crying get Thespian Stage or it can still play Hope Tender anyways? Since that can untap double Lotus Field to make enough mana to cast Omniscience and Emergent Ultimatum next turn. If we get another turn that is. So flashback secrets. Sack a clue to draw. Your opponent has seen almost half of their deck by now. I'm surprised that they still haven't found the combo. They can hard cast World Spine Worm and Xenagos now. Can even copy it with the reflection of Kiki Jiki. Okay, point's gonna take out Leer with two burn spells, it seems. Alright, there's creativity for two, so they still have both pieces in the deck. Maybe they put one back with the uh, Volcanic Spite. So copy World Spine Worm with reflection. And then give it haste with Xenagos attacking for 45, plus two more from the Shaman. And that's going to be enough for lethal, even an impulse to rub it in. Yep, just uh, took us a little bit too long to assemble the combo here. And this was bound to happen at some point. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Could use an extra land that isn't Lotus Field here. Because I don't really want to sacrifice a Thespian Stage, and that works. So now I can play Grazer, put in Temple. Facing Red Green. And Emergent Ultimatum we already have, so I don't think we need another. Would rather find a pour over the pages. Okay. Turn to Fable. So not sure what our opponent's playing here, but for now, play Tracker, play Lotus Field seems to be the play. And then if Tracker survives, it can generate three additional mana next turn. Opponent just discarding Stomping Ground. Speaking of Stomp, we could see one on the Tracker. It's going to be a Fleetwood Dancer instead. So our opponent on kind of a Naya aggro deck. Alright, unless that treasure casts something relevant, we would get to untap with Tracker. 
So getting to see some of the upside of tracker over maybe a hidden string. So let's go ahead and make some mana. Play stage. Activate to copy Lotus Field. And then I could still Inquisition for whatever I want, or we can play another tracker. And then next turn we should have all the mana we need to combo off. So turn three, and we have a double Lotus Field in play. What can the opponent come up with? Another Dancer, that's acceptable. Opponent doesn't tap the Elves, so they've got some 3-drop they want to cast here. A Voice of Resurgence, okay, nice new addition from the Anthology expansion. But I'm not sure if it's gonna save them here. And uh, three green, three black, untap, make three blue, cast ultimatum, and then we want to get omniscience, Chandra, and pour of the pages. I think could also go for Leer, but that's the downside. Leer doesn't cast hidden strings to make more mana. So we'll give this a try. Could also get a peer into the abyss, but we want to make sure we can keep generating mana with pour over the pages. Opponent does not give us Chandra, but we get an Omniscience. And then with Mastermind's Acquisition, that's going to be pretty powerful. Yeah, I think we have it here. Discard Breeding Pool. Cast Acquisition for Approach. And then between Shimmer and Pour, we'll be able to find that same approach again. Could make some more mana, but don't really need it. And there's our approach. Awesome. And that does it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're working with a decent hand, I would say. Can hope Tracker survives to untap Lotus Fields. And against turn one Mystic, that seems likely. So we have a lot of mana. Only the single Lotus Fields. But uh, with Acquisition, we can maybe find a pour over the pages. It's our opponent on a blank green elf deck, presumably, with turn two Warmaster now. Okay, make some mana. Play field. And then I could just play Tracker and just play a Vizier of Tumbling Sands. I think that's reasonable in this spot. Since Elf Deck's not gonna take out my creatures. And this way we set up for a total of 12 mana next turn off a single Lotus Field. So that means we can cast Leer, cast a couple Impulses, or we could Acquisition. With only one land, pour over the pages is not quite as effective. Soaring City is an extra land drop, so that helps. So let's make some mana. Play a Leer. Could also Recovery, but nothing to recover. So maybe starting with Impulse is not a bad idea. If I Acquisition, I can get Emergent Ultimatum, which would be pretty good. So we could go for... Uh, the Peer into the Abyss, although against the Elf deck we have to be careful that we don't die to a Shaman of the Pack. And I'm not going to be able to cast said uh, Ultimatum or Peer this turn yet. Maybe tapping this for green. Could still maybe channel a Soaring City if needed. 
There's the ultimatum, as well as a Thespian's Stage. Both would be decent hits. If I grab Stage, then all of a sudden Pour of the Pages becomes quite the card. Or we could go straight for the Emergent Ultimatum, but without Double Lotus Field it's not guaranteed to win us the game. So I think we grab Stage, play it. Can copy a Lotus Field. Don't think our opponent's killing us next turn yet, so I'll just copy a Lotus Field right now. And then I can pass and cast Impulse during the opponent's turn. Or we could channel Soaring City since we control a Legendary. So it could technically bounce a creature. Oh no, this is an end of turn Court of Calling for 3. So that could get a Shaman of the Pack, untap Shaman of the Pack again, and we could be dead. So I might want to just uh, channel Soaring City, bounce Warmaster. So they don't get to make a token. And they have fewer Elves in play. And there's a Shaman of the Pack. Okay, down to 14 we go. Nykthos can also make some extra mana. Yeah, glad we bounced a Warmaster. And Dwinnan's Elite. So yeah, we should be okay this turn, but next turn we're probably dead. So we need to combo. And from this position, I have to imagine we're good to go. Our opponent's got one card left. Cross our fingers that it's nothing too scary. A Collected Company would be bad. Or another Shaman of the Pack. Yeah, I think we might just be dead now. Down to three, and our opponent hasn't attacked yet. We've got one blocker. Yeah, I mean, we did our best here. The Soaring City on Warmaster seems very much necessary, but that uh, Nykthos giving them that extra mana boost they needed to still kill us this turn. Yeah, that's a shame. Would have been able to combo otherwise. Okay, we're on the play. We've got our Lotus Field, a Tracker on two, and Scrying to get our uh, Thespian stage. So yeah, this seems like a decent hand. Hopefully Tracker survives. So we can make more mana with it. Yeah, turn one Elves. Probably a matchup where Tracker's likely to stick around. And then I think I prefer it for now over Hope Tender. Even though Tender can make more mana once we have a Thespian stage in play. So we're going to Green Devotion Strategy, turn to Kiora. Untap, and another Elf, so we're point off to a decent start as well. So play Lotus Field. And then playing Hope Tender now probably makes sense. And then I can either Impulse or Sylvan Scrying for Stage. So we know we have the payoff card, so we just need to make mana, and Sylvan Scrying is probably the best way of accomplishing that by getting stage. So I don't see a reason to wait. So next turn, play stage, copy it, have a mana floating. I can untap with tracker, 4 mana, untap with hope tender. That's plus 5, so 9 mana. So we'll be one short of casting omniscience, I think. So I may not want to exert Hope Tender yet this turn if uh, we'll need it for the following turn. Because if we can cast omniscience, then casting Peer should be game. Karn? Okay, that can maybe get a hate card out of the sideboard. Not sure if they're playing Damping Sphere nowadays, now that uh, Thespian Stage is legal in Explore. Although that would also be a card that nerfs a uh, Nykthos. So your opponent might just get some uh, Sky Sovereign or some other card that can deal with our creatures. Pithing Needle. Yeah, that's uh, not bad. Can name Thespian Stage. So I can no longer copy Lotus Field. Or they could name Hope Tender. Yeah, name Stage. So I can no longer copy Lotus Field. We can now kill Karn, so that's nice. And that's probably what I'll do. Take out Karn. And then I can still Impulse at the very least. And then just play Tapped Recovery. Prevent Karn from getting anything else. And with a single Lotus Field we might still get there. Storm the Festival's not bad. 
gets another Karn, of course, and a Nissa, which can untap a forest to make two mana. So it's not looking good. Kiora also represents two more mana with Nissa in play. Serpon can get another hate card with Karn and cast it. Polychronos, we don't care about too much. And draws with Kiora. And what can Karn find? Maybe a Stone Brain to start exiling cards from our deck. Nope, Sky Sovereign, as we feared. So we can Impulse. So I think if we get Mastermind's Acquisition, next turn I'll still be able to make enough mana with Hope Tender exerting to just cast an Omniscience. And if we cast Omniscience with Acquisition and Peer into the Abyss in hand, we should be able to close out the game pretty quickly. So yeah, let's go for it. Untap Lotus Fields. Make more mana. And yeah, Thespian Stage is shut off by Pithing Needle, but still get to exert Untapping Stage and Field. And cast Omniscience. And then now we're off to the races. We can Acquisition, get Approach. And then draw into it with Peer into the Abyss. And cast it. And that does it. Awesome. Yeah, the Green Devotion matchup is always incredibly close. Both decks capable of generating a ton of mana. So it's just a matter of who can get their return earlier. Alright, so we get to see our Lotus Field combo deck in action, and despite still missing a few pieces from the Pioneer build, the deck still seems functional enough that you can run it with moderate success in Explorer, and once we get those final pieces I'm sure the deck will become even more popular. Right now having those mana creatures to untap your land can both be an advantage as well as a disadvantage, as we could see against those removal heavy decks they can be a bit of a liability, but if you're up against other fast creature combo decks then having those creatures to untap your Lotus Field can actually speed things up by a turn so it's a bit of a double-edged sword but for now of course we don't have a choice so that's going to do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day i also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd